your envy. <laughs> and so sometimes we're not aware that those dynamics are going on and we enter into relationship after relationship after relationship trying to fix something or to check that to-do thing off our, off our developmental checklist that never was quite resolved growing up. Unplanned pregnancy is an issue. Some people get married because there was a pregnancy and they believe that marriage is the, uh, is the best choice for that. Um, I'm sorry, the individual who introduced me was? Sally. Sally. When Sally introduced me, she mentioned that I have twin sons, um, which is great. And uh, they're both Marines, and they can take care of Dad. <laughs> At least until they could track me down and get the wallet. <laughs> but uh, our sons are adopted. Uh, my wife had four miscarriages. <laughs> Three times she went into full labor and delivered a dead baby. Now, I'm not saying that other than the fact that what I said earlier, when couples go through painful and difficult times, it's a lot more than just physical attraction or other things that help a relationship make it. But the uh, boy's birth mother was an unmarried uh, college student, and she came to the point that she realized that if she kept the children that they would all probably grow up in poverty. And she understood that just getting married to the birth father wasn't necessarily going to change a dynamic or make it healthy. And she made an important, probably very difficult uh, and painful decision in some ways, but I believe, and she believes, um, a good decision. Um, just as an aside, um, we reconnected our boys uh, to her and to their birth father uh, some years ago, and actually the boy's birth mother and uh, her mother spent Thanksgiving with us uh, two years ago, which was a lot of fun. Um, levels of emotional and spiritual maturity can impact whether or not we make wise or unwise choices. The need to correct family of origin issues and also our Christian convictions or the lack of them. Sometimes we make decisions based on things other than principle. And that can have an impact on the relationship. The good news is in James 1, 5, James said, if any of us lack wisdom, all we have to do is ask, and he'll give it to us abundantly, right? So what happens before saying I do? Let me say something to you. I do not believe in premarital counseling. Does that surprise you? You're saying, wait a minute. You're a counselor. You're a therapist. You're a teacher. Let me rephrase that. I believe in pre-engagement counseling. Of course I believe in couples who are pursuing a meaningful and in-depth relationship, talking through some things with somebody. This is just my personal belief. You know, don't, don't sweat if you have a slightly different belief. It's not law. <clears throat> but I believe that an engagement is a period of time that you allow yourselves and your family and your friends and your loved ones time to get it on their calendar so they can celebrate the event with you. It's not the season to sort out all the junk. I believe when a couple gets to the point where they say, I think we should get married, they've pretty much said, you know, we've looked at all this and we feel pretty good about it. Not that we've solved everything, but we've examined it. And I'm going to talk in a minute about some things I think every couple should examine. And so that's why I almost believe in pre-engagement counseling. That is a couple, come on, how many of you have been, you don't have to raise your hand, but when you're in a serious relationship, right? Don't you do the, even before someone pops the question, don't you do the, well, what would it kind of be like if we ever got married? What would that look like? Mm -hmm. I mean, couples who sense that that's maybe where the Lord is leading them begin to have some of those conversations anyway. They can envision the fact that maybe we're called together, maybe we're called to marry. And I'm saying if you're to that point, that's a great time to sit down with a third party and begin examining all the different dynamics that surround that important decision. And then think through getting engaged. And it's also assessing the readiness for marriage or remarriage. Remember, the divorce rate is high enough. A lot of people get married a second or a third time. And so I think you have to look at a few things. 
be in being prepared. Let me see all my guys in here that have earrings. It's okay. It's not a shame. Raise your hand. See, you're already better prepared. You've experienced pain and you've bought jewelry. <laughs> I know that'll preach somewhere. Let me tell you about my first date. You want to hear this? My beloved Donna. Um, she almost said, I was driving over, she said, Do you think I should come? Because they won't believe you. <laughs> we were living down in the Hampton Roads anywhere. Anyone here from the Hampton Roads area? Alright, so some of you, when I mention some of this, you'll go, okay, I, I understand. Well, we were on our way to a movie. It was a Friday night, driving a movie, and uh, I was driving her car um, because I didn't have one. That's impressive. I had a bicycle, and, um, and you know, going 20, 25 miles from Williamsburg, where we were down to uh, Newport News, uh, wasn't really cool to be on a bicycle. So we're driving her car, and as we're driving on the interstates, cars are just whizzing by us. And um, Dama, in her own sweet way, cleared her throat, looked at me, and said, is, is there any reason you're doing 35 on the interstate? <laughs> well, so that was a little embarrassing. You know, we were engaged in some conversation, so I sped up, and we got to the movie theater, and it was packed out, it was a Friday night, and I said, uh, why don't you go find us some seats, and I'll go get some uh, refreshments. And I hate getting into a concession line at a movie theater. Because, you know, it's twice as long as the ticket line, and by the time you've got your $30 worth of popcorn and soda, <clears throat> come on, you go to the dollar movie, and if you're Christians, you won't bring in the popcorn and the drink. <laughs> you can edit that out of the table. <laughs> because it's like, you know, you spend 30 bucks for this. So I finally get our popcorn and soda, and I go into the theater, and because it took me so long, the movie, or at least the, the previews were playing. I hate walking into a dark movie theater because you can see nothing. All I know is I'm standing in front of someone, I'm loaded down, I'm looking for Donna, and I can't see her anywhere. And I'm waiting for like a little bright scene so the theater, so I can do this, you know, the little two-step. And you're looking around, you don't want to say real loud because... And finally I see her about halfway down, almost to the wall. And so I'm like, I have everything, excuse me, I'm sorry. Here. Here's a corn and soda. Oh yeah, the whole thing. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Big tub of popcorn, extra butter, new dress for the day. I told you I was in therapy for a couple of years. So yeah, the whole thing, right on her. And so we left the movie theater after the movie was over. Yes, we did watch the movie. Those of you that are from Hampton Roads, if I say the words Mercury Boulevard, do you understand? Do you have PTSD? Stress trauma? Whoever designed this road needs to spend a couple of years with me in therapy. Anyway, it, they fixed it now, but it used to be two lanes this way, two lanes this way, and they had these frontage roads on the outside. I pulled out of the movie theater parking lot and hung a right into two lanes of oncoming traffic. Oh. I am literally squealing wheels in the middle of the intersection. Donna has a death grip with a little plastic handle thing in the car. You know, I'm like, headlights are coming at us. I'm like, are you okay? She said, yeah, I think so. So I said, why don't we go back to Williamsburg and maybe stop and get a ID or something like that. And as I'm driving, the guys will get this. As I'm driving, I'm saying to myself, I know a shortcut. And so we're engaged in conversation. And we're driving, and I catch my shortcut turn out of my razor-sharp peripheral vision, and I did what a guy would do. I slammed on the brakes, and we skidded about three or four feet past the turn. Donna's like, Phew. are you okay? He said, yeah, I think so. We got to the... Where we're getting some ice cream. I don't think I did anything goofy there, but when we were starting to, when we were leaving, it was starting to rain. And I thought, well, I'll do the gentleman thing. Do the umbrella, 
hold the car door open, so we run out, right? Okay? Lost the car keys. <laughs> yeah. This is not funny. This is painful. And by the time I realized I left them on the table, they had buzzed the table. Poor thing, I said, well, this is already wet and sticky, so now it should just be wet, you know? And, um, yeah, I got home and my roommates were like, well, how's the big date with Donna? I'm like, failure. Total failure. I'm, I'm moving out of Williamsburg. I'm writing to all the dead columns. <laughs> Donna got home and her roommate said, well, how was the big date with Eric? She said, well, it was different. <laughs> she said, but I think he's in love. How many of you are glad that God gives you makeup tests in a relationship? Huh? Has God ever given you a makeup in a relationship? No? Just wait. Just live a little longer. <laughs> Well, when we went on our second date two years later, <laughs> I promise. I, it was two years of therapy, two years later, so I think <laughs> we went and we did start dating. We fell in love. And I remember it was the next big thing in the dating list. I, I already knew, I think this is the person I'm going to marry. I knew, we both knew we were falling in love. And we went to a dinner and a movie. And I'm thinking tonight that as we're driving home, tonight is the night I think I want to kiss her goodnight for the very first time. And I'm thinking, well, a gentleman would ask. So we're standing outside her apartment, and I looked at her, and I said, may I kiss you goodnight? Total silence. <laughs> Ladies, do you know what that, of course you know, do you know what that does to a guy? My graduate education had not prepared me for that moment. So I looked at her as she's just kind of standing there. I said, may I please <laughs> kiss you? And I, total silence. I'm like, I don't know what to do here. I've not, I've not been trained in the art of relationship to this level yet. She said nothing. She just looked at me and smiled. <laughs> You, 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 like it. you know exactly what you're doing. <laughs> so then I got a little smart alecky on her. I looked at her and I said, what's the matter? You deaf? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> she looked at me she said, no. Are you paralyzed? <laughs> And as they say, the rest is history. I even got a card. She likes to torture me this way. Happy anniversary, dear. I can still remember our first date. <laughs> can you believe I married you anyway? <laughs> wow. See? Aren't relationships fun? <clears throat> All right. Let's talk about some things you should talk about if you're considering true love relationship. I mean, here's what I've learned. We spend more time in the purchase of a car or a home, if we're uh, fortunate and blessed enough to be able to purchase a home, than we spend on probably the most significant decision in life. Other than choosing Christ, I think choosing who we might partner with on this side of heaven is probably at least the second most important decision that we'll make. And I'll see people do all kinds of research about this car or that car, and they'll go to lots and they'll kick tires and, you know, a car uh, or a house to buy. Now, imagine if you were going to buy a house and you're touring around with the real estate agent. And the real estate agent says, and you say, well, what year was it built? And she says, I don't know, 